to Rhyolite and it's the most ex most exp expansive site of them in the UK. Did, all those lavas did nothing but destroy all the life that was here. You don't know that. There's no life in the beds over there. Anyway, my name's Callum. And I'm James. He studies dead things. I'm a paleontologist. He studies igneous rocks. Geologist. And today we're here at King Sand to look at some of the geology in your local area by taking you on a trip back through time. <gasps> Metaphorically. Uh. Well, if someone hadn't spent all our money on fossils, maybe we could have afforded the time machine. But fossils are cool. Anyway, our story takes place in the Permian. That's the time just before the dinosaurs. And here at King Sand, things were really beginning to hot up, with lavas flowing all over the place, like these ones here. These don't look much like lavas. Aren't lavas supposed to be runny? Yes, but much like when you put water in a freezer, the lavas cooled and solidified, forming the rocks known as igneous rocks that we see here today. But aren't there lots of different kinds of igneous rocks? Well, yes. You have basic igneous rocks, which are made up of loads of dark crystals, acidic rocks, which are made up of loads of light crystals, and intermediate rocks, which are made up of a mixture of the both. And igneous rocks aren't just the only thing here at King Sand. As you can see, we've got igneous, sedimentary, and hopefully we'll be able to see some metamorphic as well. So come and join us as we take a look. Let's go. You have no idea what this is, do you? Not as such, no. Right, Sebak, it's my time to shine. This is a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are made from small pieces of other rocks, uh, like sand grains. And they can also be made of things like fossils, bits of plants, all kinds of things. And, uh, there are many different kinds of sedimentary rocks, and many of them are found here at King Sand. This is one of them, it's a sandstone. This is another kind of sedimentary rock called a conglomerate, which is made up of large particles of other rocks that have been broken apart and then put back together again as a completely new rock. Some of the particles can be very large, like this boulder here, whereas some can be tiny, all the way down to similar size to the sand grains we saw in the sandstone just now. So here we have the other extreme of sedimentary rocks. This, uh, this may look very similar to where we were looking at sandstones earlier, but in between the red sandstones you can see this greyish green mudstone, uh, which forms these very characteristic platy layers. That's great James, but what are these sedimentary rocks actually useful for? Well, sedimentary rocks are very useful if you want to know what the earth was like millions of years ago, because they changed depending on the environment at the time. and. This is very useful for things like climate change, and if we know what the Earth was like millions of years ago, we can know what it might be like in the future, and what changes may affect us. Uh, so, for instance, this mudstone uh, formed in a very low energy environment, where it settled out from water that was very peaceful, almost perfectly still. So, we know that there was water here in the past. James, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're on a beach. That's true, there, there is obviously water here, but the wind and the waves keep the water in a high energy state that keeps the mud from settling out. It's just carried around in the swirls and eddies. And so only sand, which is heavier, settles out. That's why we have a beach here and not a mud flat. So this tells us that, that using sedimentary rocks, the structures within them, and the sedimentary rocks that occur one after the other, like sandstone, mudstone, sandstone, we can know the changes that have occurred over time. And for instance, we know that these rocks were formed in the Permian uh, before the lava field was, in, was uh, extruded on top of them. And so therefore we know what this area was like all those millions of years ago. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I still prefer lavas and um, igneous rocks though. Yeah, the igneous rocks did kind of destroy everything still prefer them. Well, what do you say we find some metamorphic rocks for the good people at home? Sounds good, though I hope there's no more sedimentary rocks. I can't promise that, but let's go and have a look.
Now, there are several ways you can make a metamorphic rock by taking other rocks like igneous and sedimentary and, or even other metamorphic rocks and heating them up so much that the crystals within those rocks change into new crystals. It's kind of like baking a cake. You take your mixture, you put it in the oven, and when you take it out, it's changed into a cake. Now, there are two ways you can do this. The first is simply by heating the rock, so much so that the crystals within it change. The other way is basically the same as the first, except we add pressure to it, helping the crystals change. Nothing they can handle. Oh. There isn't much regional metamorphism here at Kingston. There is contact metamorphism. Over here, to our left, you can see this igneous rock, the rhyolite we saw earlier, has intruded into this sandstone. And in between, it's created an area where the rock has changed into a metamorphic rock. And on this diagram that Callum is handily displaying, you can see the two the different rock types we have here. On the right is the rhyolite, and on the left is this sandstone you see all around us. And in between, in between this area that has been changed by the heat of the intruding igneous rock into the new metamorphic rock. Now, we name metamorphic rocks after the rock they formed from and on their grain size. Here, the metamorphic rocks form from sandstone. So there'd be a meta-sandstone, or a samite, as we like to call it. Uh, and there you have it, the three different rock types. And all on your front doorstep. Now, me and James are off to explore more geology in the area and try and discover more about the Earth's processes. And the fossils, don't forget the fossils. Yes, and the fossils. So we'll see you guys later. Make sure you come down here and appreciate all the great geology that's around us. Bye.